Okay guys, so today I've got two gas valves in front of me here. Uh, they're both out of a Valent Ecotech Plus model. Uh, we have a perfectly fine working gas valve and then we have a faulty gas valve. And this gas valve, the one that's faulty, the fault code showing on this particular one uh, was F26, uh, which is very specific uh, to the stepper motor, one section of this gas valve. Uh, now there's three different variants of these gas valves so you need to be careful they all look they all look the same but you need to be careful when it comes to selecting it for the right model because they're all different for different uh, boilers uh, or different size boilers depending on which gas is using whether it's natural gas or LPG and then the size of the boiler as well uh, so these valves have uh, three different uh, test points uh, you can call it so we have a first stage holding magnet at the top here uh, which is this black connector we have a stepper motor which is a two-stage stepper motor so that's this yellow connection there and then at the bottom uh, we have a ECV safety solenoid which is this one here and this is what opens uh, the valve initially to light up and then uh, holds it open uh, and then the stepper motor obviously that increases or decreases in the well in very small increments uh, to allow enough gas to go to the burner. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be carrying out uh, some resistance testing on these to make sure uh, it shows or the tests are proven to be as per manufacturer's instructions or the readings provided by manufacturers. Uh, so what we're going to be using, the reference material we have, uh, is a training book uh, that I obtained when I went to carry out training uh, with Valent and if you need this book uh, feel free to drop me a line and you can have this book providing you're a gas engineer or, or training to be a gas engineer okay so uh, let's have a look um, there's three different tests we can carry out uh, it's all the same test but on three different positions and we can get some information uh, so, the first stage holding magnet, uh, which is the first black connection, uh, the power that we are expecting from the EC, from the PCB, not ECB, from the PCB is 22 volts DC between two cables, which is blue and red. Okay, so that's when we're carrying out a live test with everything energized and we're making sure that we are getting the power coming to the valve. Okay, so... That's that test, uh, if we are carrying out a live test, however, right now we will be checking for resistance. So that's not a live test. So we're not interested in the 22 volts DC side. What we are interested in is this 169 ohms resistance on that coil in that section. Okay, so that's one. Uh, second test we will be doing is on this ECV safety solenoid which is at the bottom, so this black connection at the bottom of the valve. Again, we're not necessarily interested in this video uh, for the 22 volts DC and then dropping it down to 16 volts DC to hold it open. We are interested in this 140 ohms resistance on this connection here. And then we will be checking the stepper motor. So stepper motor, again, is a very simple concept. Uh, it's a two-stage motor, so the middle two connections are earths, these two red ones, and then we have on the first side or top side, we have the green and brown to be checked against this earth, and then we have blue and black again to be checked against this earth. Okay, so we need to just work out the two middle points, which are both earths, and then we need to check the point above and below it to get our resistance reading, and same on the other side. It doesn't really matter whether we check in, uh, let's say, black or blue first, uh, because the readings on all of these points, as you can see, are the same, okay? So we're expecting around 117 ohms reading when we check brown or black against earth or blue and green against earth, okay? So we'll be getting that reading. So let's see what we find. Let's carry out the first test which is on this first stage holding magnet and we're expecting around 169 ohms resistance 
So let's set up a camera here and also let's get some light. Come on, Mr. Iron Man, give us some light and you can look down to give us some more light down there. Okay, perfect. Come closer. There we go. Let's set our multimeter, guys. We need it on resistance setting, not on buzzer setting that we use most of the time for continuity purposes. It's on the resistance itself. Okay, so we place our meter back. Now, there is always some resistance within the cables. Uh, it's not massive, it's not huge, but if you want to know what it is, just touch them together and it's around 0.3 ohms, which again is negligible. Okay, so let's check the working valve first. So we are checking the first top motor, which is this connection here, first stage holding magnet. You can check in any order, it doesn't really matter, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna be checking this one first. Okay, so let's see what we find on two connections. 169.9 ohms near enough bang on okay and that is on the working valve which is perfectly fine let's do the same test on the valve that's not working and let's see if this section of the valve is okay 178 ohms now one thing to point out whilst carrying out these resistance readings is the temperature. Now this valve's been sat inside my office whilst this, this one here, the one that's working, has been in my van and it's a lot colder compared to this one here. And the temperature does have an effect on resistance reading. Not dramatically, it's not gonna double or quadruple the readings, but you're expecting some reading, you know, some percentage up and down. Uh, but you can have an engineering judgment on that. If you're expecting 169 or 170 ohms and you're getting 175 or 180 or 100 and, you know, 5, 10 here and there, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But if it was open line or if it was double the amount that was given by manufacturers, then yes, there is something wrong here. Okay, so on both of these valves, we checked that this motor or well, this holding magnet seems to have correct resistance. So that's one test done, okay? Then we will be moving on to the next test. So the simplest one to carry out is this ECV solenoid, which is at the bottom. So let's check that, okay? On both of them, the reading we are expecting for this one is around 140 ohms, okay? Let's see, on the first one, 112.5 okay so that's on a slightly cooler gas valve that's been outside in my van let's see around 117 ohms on the one that's been inside the expectation is around 140 ohms even this personally speaking I consider it to be okay okay it's not dramatically out 117 and 112 okay so the reading is not too far away yes we're expecting 140 ohms but it's not as if it's open line or it's not as if it's only like 10 or 20 ohms or 500 ohms it's still there or thereabouts okay so we've got these two tests done let's consider both of these tests that we carried out in both of these valves to be passed Okay, so both of these tests are perfectly fine. Now, the next test would be on the stepper motor, okay, which is this yellow connection on both of these. Now, on yellow connection, as you can see, we have six points. So, we have one, two, three on one side, and then one, two, three on the other side. And we had a look on screen earlier that the middle two are earth points on both sides. So what we need to actually check is the top and the bottom one against the middle because that's earth. So we will be checking earth and top, earth and bottom and we are expecting around 117 ohms for it. Let's have a quick look. 
117 ohms okay and then we'll be checking again middle of the other side to the top and then middle to the bottom and again we're expecting very similar reading on both of these valves obviously okay so let's check the one that's in working order first let's check the stepper motor on that first let's see what we find so we're expecting around 117 ohms when we're checking the middle point to top so let's have a look so middle to top if you can see the multimeter let's have a look so middle to top is around 119 ohms so middle to bottom is 119 let's move to the other side so middle to the top pin let's get a good enough connection first 119 and then from middle pin to the bottom pin here 117 ohms so I consider this to be perfectly fine all the readings marry up and it's all good let's check this one here same again we're going to be checking the middle two pins with top and bottom point and same with the middle on this side with the top and bottom pin there so let's see again we are still expecting 117 ohms so middle pin with top good connection no reading so that's an open line middle pin to the bottom no connection so that's again open line moving on to the middle pin on the other side middle to top 116 ohms middle pin to the bottom pin there nothing so that confirms that this stepper motor is actually faulty and that's the reason why it was given us the f26 fault on this gas valve so although the power the voltage was coming to these motors or these solenoids because the stepper motor is faulty the boiler wasn't functioning correctly and it was given us the f26 code so that's how we check a gas valve for resistance. I know it's a lot easier having a gas valve on a table and test it in this kind of environment. And when you're out working and you have customers standing behind your shoulder most of the time and they're asking questions or they're expecting you to come with a magic wand and just fix the boiler, it becomes difficult. But if you take your time and do your testing right, uh, it will save you from buying misdiagnosing buying expensive parts uh, which won't work and it will cost you a lot of money um, at least doing it this way you've done all of your testing correct and then you can say with 100% confidence that this part is faulty and then when you spend 200 plus pounds on one of these it's justified and more so when you bring it and install it it will work I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line. If you enjoyed this video and if it helped you in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to like the video, leave a comment uh, and do check the channel out. There are some useful videos on there. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to drop me a line. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.